I was going to start really uh, just by asking something of each of you individually, just to describe something about what you've been doing. Um, so, Bo, I thought if I might start with yourself, um, a big part of what you've talked about is that need to create political space. And I just wanted to understand a little bit about how you went about creating that political space and the public acceptance of this sort of transformational change. Yeah, we, uh, I think we, we, we did it because um, we have always been a, a green uh, city. Uh, but at the COP meeting in 2009, uh, we really wanted to do something. And there was a kind of um, environment for taking big decisions. And we decided to be CO2 neutral in Copenhagen, to be the first CO2 neutral capital in the world in 2025. But I think the clue here is that, that after that, I was responsible for organizing that plan. And uh, it could have ended there with a, you know, a nice goal, but uh, I emphasize that we have to be very specific, that we have to make uh, plans with activities to make roadmaps for each sector in the city. So we will be sure that we actually would be, will be CO2 neutral in 2025. And I've seen your plan in Perth and you have also decided, you have decided to be the most sustainable uh, small city in Europe. And I can tell you, it's not done by planting some trees or making some bike, bike lanes or take a street or two and, and tell the citizens that, that you, you, you can design this street. Because if you really have to reach a goal to be the most sustainable city, I think it must involve uh, your carbon footprints. It must uh, involve uh, what are your CO2 emissions and how can you bring it down? And um, this, is, this is very important. We, ha we have to act now. It's our last chance. And, uh, and, 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 and I mean, then if you have the decision and you present the activities for the political room, for the politicians here, and they can see what it takes. And then if they really want to do it, they have to put the financial support. They have to make a platform for involving citizens, for involving stakeholders um, to, to co-create uh, the right solutions to, to make experiments and all the other recommendations I, I came up with when we had the conference. Do, do you think there's political acceptance that this is no longer an option? It's not a nice to have. It's, it's an it, essential it's no longer, part of moving forwards. It's no longer an option. I mean, now we are so pr uh, profiled internationally. Uh, we have to be CO2 neutral in 2025. And, and I, I, I mean, and it's hard work. I mean, we still need to find 430,000 uh, tons CO2. And we have two hard working groups now and they will come up with solutions in 2021. 20, uh, and then we have four years because the traffic are still, you know, uh, people are getting richer, uh, people get more cars, and we can't control the traffic in the city because this is a government, but we still want to be CO2 neutral. So we have to compensate for that by uh, building more windmills and making more uh, solar power and things like that. Uh, it's, it's hard work, and I think it will also be hard work for you. You have to be specific, and to be specific, you have to hire the right experts. It's costly, uh, but but if you don't hire the right experts in waste area, in green mobility, in energy production, and so on, then you can make the, you can't make the specific plans, and uh, this is important, I think. So if you make the specific plans, you have something to discuss uh, on to base your discussions on. It's like you know. When, when you uh, architects, uh, it can be hard to discuss with them, but if you take a, a big drawing of a building or something and put it on the table, then the discussion starts. And this was the same for us. We had a plan and then people said, no, we want more cars. No, we want more bikes. We, but then you start, you have the specific discussion on how to design your solutions. 
And it's this process you have to get into. And I must also say that, that when you have started as we have done, um, people want to join because now it's, it's a success. It's hard work, but it's also a success story. So um, the, the companies, the citizens, uh, the politicians, everybody wants to be a part of this success story. So, 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 so it's kind of self-enforcing if you get the right start. And I think in Perth, you have uh, taken a, a very good step with these conferences to get the right start. And uh, also, I think you have already promoted yourself. I saw you, Mike, at the Scottish Parliament uh, when we had a discussion last Friday and promoting Perth. And I think it's a good idea because uh, it forced yourself to be responsible for what you have said you would be the most sustainable small city in Europe. Thank you, Bo. Um, Lena, a lot of nodding going on there, so maybe we can come to Finland and uh, talk about some of your experience, particularly as interested in the community engagement and uh, perhaps a little bit about the climate arena. Yes, uh, well, in E, since we've been now for about eight years working uh, for, for climate change mitigation, I think this environmental work and, and climate actions have become part of the identity of the local people. And it's something that's, that's bringing people together and more and more getting the community feeling that this is the way we do things in E. And um, this, this, this is what, 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 what is our shared, shared value uh, in, in the city. And it's, uh, it's very exciting to see, for example, that one of the key reasons to move to E for, for the new families is the environmental work. So it does have many kinds of impacts uh, for the city. And uh, I think it's getting just more and more stronger all the time. Uh, of course, at the very heart of what we do uh, uh, is the collaboration with the schools. So in every school and in every nursery in E, the children actually do climate actions in their daily life. The very easy example is that they measure the consumption of water, heat and electricity in the, in the school buildings. And uh, they measure this all year round. And at the end of the year, uh, the, in the calculations, we show how much they have saved in the water, heat and electricity. So what, what is the footprint of that? And what is the amount in euros that they have saved? And the children get 50% back. So we call this a 50-50 method. And the children get this 50% back and they can use it for whatever they decide themselves. So the children are also very empowered. And I think this is uh, one of our keys that gives us so much climate hope that the children learn from three year old on that it is possible to make actions for the better climate and it is economically profitable. So I would say this is the key with our community involvement. And uh, as we have been succeeding in E, we had our 80% um, uh, emission reduction target for this year, for 2020, and we have reached that. Wow. We are now just working on for the, for the new target, which shall be more towards climate sinks. So we want to be also a, a, a sink to, to, to help others uh, in, in their work also and in, encourage everyone. Uh, we realized that um, as we have succeeded in E, uh, it is possible for everyone to succeed. And there are no excuses uh, for it. So if E can do it, everybody can do it. Um, and we realized that in Finland, we didn't have a single uh, event uh, only for making solutions together for climate change mitigation. Uh, climate was always a site event or a theme of one of the conferences, but there was no such an event where everybody is invited to come together to, to realize climate actions. And that's when we uh, established uh, our Ilmasto Arena, the climate festival, national climate festival. Uh, it's a two day event where we invite everybody, the citizens, the farmers, the, the uh, politicians, the uh, presidents of the leading political parties, the uh, heads of uh, 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 corporates, 
and academics, uh, artists, uh, singers, uh, pop stars, everybody together to together find solutions uh, to tackle climate change. And now we want to go international and we are very happy to be, begin collaboration with Perth because we do believe that uh, only in collaboration we make uh, uh, long-term impacts. Lovely, and we're very happy to be invited, so uh, yes. Um, okay, thank you. Philip, can I come to you? I just wondered if you could tell us a little bit about um, the Living Streets campaign you've been involved in in Ghent and just tell us a wee bit more about that. The Living Streets um, campaign is a, um, a specific campaign to give the streets to, to the people. What we did was um, in some streets, uh, residents could redesign their street. And um, they uh, got the street for two, two months. And Everything was free. They, they could do what, what everything they, they wanted. One um, uh, one thing was uh, was said by us: there were there should be no cars anymore in the street. And what was very um, important was that it was temporary. It was only for two months. Why? Because some opponents said mm, we don't like the living streets but it's, um, it's only for two months, it's okay. Um, two months, uh, it's, it's, it's only 60 days, it's, uh, it will uh, pass fast and so on. But what happened was that the two things, uh, another thing, the design was totally different from the res residents. If you compare it with the design of our engineers and our designers, they said, wow, these trees look totally different than normally. And after two months, what we saw was that opponents said, oh, it, it is interesting. Maybe we should redesign the streets as, as they did. And the opponents came people who were in favor of, of our living streets. So it it helped to convince people, but also it, um, it was uh, important for our designers that they saw that a street design is not only a street uh, design for cars, but it should be a design for, peop for people. It's, it's like what Jan, Jan Gehl always says, if you design a city for cars, you get cars. If you design a city for people, you get people. And the living streets are just an example of it. Brilliant. So that, that, leads, that leads me to a question, I think, for all of you in a way, but um, I'll try and work my way around you. But um, that issue about how much support you had at the front end, how, how, how much did people back this straight away? How much have people changed their perspectives now that they have seen some of this change, how much have they come on board with that change? So, Philip, have you, you obviously brought that up. So, yes, but but the living streets are only one little small um, uh, element in what we did in the last seven eight years in Ghent. It uh, it, it it showed people that another way of think of thinking of, of of designing was possible. But the most important. Um, I did in the, in the last years was the circulation plan, but it's 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 you you have to um, get those two things together because by the living streets the small project people started to think started to discuss with the circulation plan we got rid of the true traffic in Ghent. It is uh, an, an an amazing plan where, where we uh, had about a share of 22% of uh, cyclists in 2016. We have now about 40%, a share of 40% of cyclists in, two, it was 2018. So from in some, in only three years from 22% to 40%, it was uh, incredible. And that's the circulation plan. 
uh, that was very important. Um, but the living streets were the preparation of it. What is important is if you do something, what, what Bo said, we have to act now, right? But it's also, it's, it's very important that we have results. You can, um, you can tell stories and, and, and keep telling stories, but at a certain moment, people ha have to see there are results and something is changing. And the moment they change, it's, it's also what Lina said, the moment it, uh, it, it's changing, the results are there, people try, uh, start to believe in it and it's, it's going, it's rolling on. So that's, that's very important. Results are very important, fast results. Okay, thank you, Philip. Um, Lina, I'll maybe come to you then. It's around that same thing. I saw it again, a lot of agreement. So was there a moment for you that sort of changed the way people felt about this project? Or again, how supportive were people from the, the outset? Uh, that is quite a good question. And of course, um, even today, I cannot say that people in E have only one opinion to climate action. So of course, uh, it varies from, from person to person, also from, uh, from their um, kind of path in life, uh, the moment they are taking, and that's, that's okay. And it's also okay to criticize. That's also something that we try to emphasize, that we need also that criticism so that we develop the path to the right way. Um, and of course, um, um, uh, every time we have new politicians coming in, we need to be, we need to make sure that everybody has the right information and the right knowledge. For example, the basic thing that climate actions are not costing for us, they are bringing income to us. A very simple basic thing, which is very, very important to, to know that uh, we have been able to cut city taxation with 1.5 percentage points. So without the climate actions, it would be 1.5 percentage points higher. Very imp important messages. And of course, we need to uh, clearly communicate, openly communicate about this all the time. Um, but I must say to, to what Philip was saying, that I, I completely uh, agree with you and with, with the idea that it's so important to have these experiments with the citizens to, to uh, include everyone. And if I might take uh, one more minute of time to say uh, our example with the experiments. We had a challenge with the public transportation that people used to use their private cars for transportation. And we wanted to uh, tackle that, to find new solutions, to encourage people to use more public transportation. And uh, when we made an experiment for that, we invited 30 people who used private cars to, to, take, uh, to participate in a fast track uh, experiment, so a fast track bus that would take them to the city and back for work. And before the experiment, people were saying that they would use uh, the, uh, more public transportation if the bus stops were closer to their homes. So they felt that the barrier is that the stops are too far away. And after three weeks uh, exper experimentation time, they were writing a travel diary every day on the bus to, to see their own feelings about it. They found out that it completely changed the, their mindset. So they found out that they would use public transportation more if the bus stops were even further away. So with, the, with doing this actually themselves for the three weeks, they realized with their diaries that it's a big change in their quality of life when they walk or cycle to the bus stop and then go with the fast track. And they understood that you can only have fast tracks if the bus stops are quite far away from everybody's home, that if it goes from home to home, if, of course, it takes a long time. So it just showed that it's so important to have these temporary experiments, as you were just saying, Philip, very important. Yep. Thank you, Lena. Fantastic. And, and Bo, again, same sort of thing. I mean, is there a moment that this changed in Copenhagen? And how, how did you cut through the sort of complacency and the bureaucracy and all of those things, all the negativity in Copenhagen, or was there not any? <laughs> I mean, it is very important that you have a, a whole city council uh, behind you. And, and uh, then you can, you know, and then you evaluate all the time you you we wanted results 
And um, this is very, very important that, that, uh, that you send a very clear political signal to all the bureaucrats. Um, you have to work for this. And, and of course uh, they did. But uh, let me add to, to the discussion about the citizens, because I think it's, it's also very important that, that um, you, do, you do what we did. We combined uh, life quality for the citizens with the sustainability, called it uh, livability. I think actually it was Jan Gehl, who is from Copenhagen, who uh, started um, to, to, to talk about designing a city for people. Uh, and, and we have really followed uh, Jan Gale's ideas the last 40 years. And now we have a harbor bath. Um, we have uh, super bike lanes, we have parks. And, um, and I think that, that it's, it's, it's a part of our support from the Copenhageners that they can see actually that their life quality gets better. Uh, they can see that, that they get a lot of possibilities to live in a more healthy way, a more green way. Um, and my hope uh, have been that if you ask a young woman in one of these local areas here uh, about Copenhagen, then she would say, here in Copenhagen, we are very responsible when it comes to climate. Uh, we have a, a plan to be fossil free and to be CO2 neutral. Uh, and, and the city council are very responsible doing that and our utilities are very responsible. And we as citizens are also very responsible. Uh, we bike, we eat uh, less meat, we, uh, we, uh, we, we don't pollute, we uh, do a lot of uh, sustainable things and, and when it comes to the schools we also have uh, programs for the young, uh, uh, for the children and the young people here. So, so I, what, what I'm trying to say here is that I think it's necessary to have a, a, both a top-down and a bottom-up approach. And if you have that a, a responsible plan from the city council, and you also support all the activities from the citizens and the Copenhageners, and they can see they get a better life quality, then, I mean, if you are a bureaucrat in the municipality, then, of course, you will support this in all ways. But of course, it's hard to get started. Uh, I remember uh, 20 years ago, uh, I remember when I first uh, in the 90s said that we should initiate uh, climate plans. The bureaucrats said, oh, I, I, we, we even don't think it's legal to do it because we have a lot of regulations. Uh, and, and today, of course, it's legal. But, um, but, and also they support now, but it was hard work to, to get here. Thanks, Bill. Philip, you looked like you yeah. can't resist adding to that. <laughs> yeah, but Copenhagen has a, has a history of 30 or 40 years of, of, of green politics. But to start from a, from a base that um, is not green at all, it's not so easy. It's not as easy. And, what I what is what, what was important is that for me was that in the first year I kept sending messages to the city administration. Sorry, but I mean it. It will be hard work, and we will become a greener city. Oh yeah, and they were <laughs> were surprised. And then the experiments, as for example the living streets, are very important. I after after the first time we did it. Um, uh, to redesign the street for two months, temporary. I took a walk with some uh, guys from the city administration, engineers and so on, to look around and to talk to people. And at that moment, they were not um, on their desk on the, uh, before their laptop and, and designing things. No, they were talking to people. And at that moment, I, I think sometimes they realized, oh, what we are doing is not just a, a process, just a administration. No, it's something for people. And to feel what people think about designs and, and uh, decisions uh, we, we, we took, that's very important. To know what it means for people. And if, if the 
um, bureaucrats and administrators know what 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 people think and feel they change their 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 views and that's that you you, you have to connect people with the administration it's it's a, it's a very strange thought but it's so important that uh, that they they are they go to walk between the people this is so so important brilliant thank you Bo, I realize you wanted to come back in, I think, so. Yeah, I, I think uh, it's a good point uh, here that you have to connect uh, people with the administration. Um, in my small company, I've, I've made a, a working model where it's, it's, it's kind of circle where they say we have different networks here. We have a political network. We have a, a technical network. We have a economical network, we have organization, and then we have all the citizens. And, um, and I think it's very, very important that we get an interaction between these different networks. Very often you see politicians talk to politicians, uh, visiting each other, you see uh, engineers visiting engineers, economists talking to economists going on courses and things like that. But only if you get an interaction, so the politicians say, we want to have Perth as the most sustainable small city. Please, all our technicians, give us three scenarios and ask the economist, what will it cost? What will each of them cost? Then you can have a discussion. Then you can say, it's not, it, 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 this is too costly, we can do that. And then you can get into a, a, a scenario which, which is, will be realistic and you can, you can do it. And in this process, you have to involve the citizens all the time. And, and it's good to do it in local projects because it says a lot um, to them how they live locally. Um, we have done that in connection to our climate adaptation plan where we have 300 projects here and instead of having a space for cars, maybe we have a, a small lake now and a cafe and a playing ground for children. And, and when we involve citizens in designing that, we have all these discussions about the plan also. So this is a, an opportunity to say, it will give you changes in your local life, but we also have to discuss our bigger plan because we also have a responsibility to the rest of the world. So I think it's very good with the interaction is, uh, between different networks. Thanks, Bo. Okay, Lena, I'm gonna to come to you, but I'm gonna to add to this what, what Bo is saying. So obviously there's this need for collaboration across sectors, but actually I'm also interested in the impact of a town or a city on its wider region and how, how has that been affected by some of these proposals, positively or negatively? Yes, very positively. So surely uh, our basic idea is that uh, we pilot things in E and uh, when we succeed, we want to multiply that in the region. And if we don't succeed, <laughs> then we tell everyone that don't do this, it doesn't work out or do it in, a, in another way. So we try to be very open and, and, and communicate very openly on our succeeds, but when we succeed and also when we fail. But, but yes, we, we have been very lucky to to have um, uh, many more members now, uh, for example, in the Finnish network of carbon neutral municipalities. So, so we try to encourage everyone to, to come along and uh, with our example to show that it is possible in, in, in all the cities. It, it really, really makes sense. So it is important. And uh, very, very interestingly, uh, what was just talked about the importance of having everybody together to, to uh, do the solutions together, we are about to pilot an uh, artificial intelligence um, uh, experiment in EU. So in two weeks, uh, on Monday the 14th um, of December, every single uh, citizen in E will receive a phone call from the mayor. Uh, and, and we are um, using then uh, empathic uh, uh, machine learning systems to analyze the uh, the answers of the citizens. And we try to see, we wish to get new uh, input from the citizens. Also from those people who are quite silent normally, 
in, in, the, in the normal uh, uh, democratic uh, participatory actions that we do. So we want to, we encourage everyone to say what they think and give the message. Uh, how, what should we do to make the city even better and even more sustainable? And then we are organizing a big panel discussion with all the political parties and of course hard, tough questions so, uh, from the citizens. How could we develop it more to look like the citizens? It is very important. We also have really good um, uh, experiences from using service design in making the city greener. Uh, so, for example, a, a zoning process is something that in Finland, when you do zoning, you normally get lots of complaints about it, and it's a long process. But when we use for the zoning of the new green city center, creative methods, and invited all the citizens to participate in that, we received zero complaints. So it really showed that part of green actions and climate actions is also the idea of doing things together. When you include everyone, you get long-term sustainable solutions that you don't need to redo after three years because everybody was included and the, the solutions, the decisions really last longer time. So it's very important to invite everybody to participate. Yeah. Thank you. Philip, how do you fancy phoning all of your citizens? Um, no. <laughs> no, but it's, a, it's an interesting experiment. I should like to, to know uh, what the results will be uh, are. So uh, I, I hope, uh, Lina, you, you can send me some uh, some of your experiences. Uh, uh, it, it's very interesting, but it's, it's, it's normal. We, we don't phone to everyone, but uh, we think about, uh, think about it after uh, I, I received the results. But it's so right what you say it, uh, about to connect people and to, to have uh, their commitment I'm also responsible for public works, and if, if we are have new streets, uh, now we mostly get rid of about 20 or 30 percent of the parking uh, lots. And what we do there is small street gardens, and not only just um, realize uh, uh, realize them, uh, implement them, um, or build them, but we try to get the commitment of the residents to, um, to, to, to work in those small gardens. These are their gardens. And so they are committed, they, they are connected to the street. And at that moment, we don't get complaints for the, 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 the fact that the parking uh, spaces um, are away. So it's also a, a, a kind of uh, an example of connection of commitment and so on. So good involvement and, and collaboration avoids a lot of future problems. So, yeah. okay, um, we're, we are gonna start running out of time. So I've got one key question I want to ask you all, but just before I do that, a couple of quick questions, but if we can go with quite short answers. First of all, Philip, just around that then, this isn't just a job for politicians. This is who, who can lead, who should lead? Sorry, I, I didn't understand the question. Yeah, you're saying this is not just a thing politicians should lead on, is that right? And if not, who, who is the right person? Who are the right people to lead in moving cities to be more sustainable? Um, so everyone who, who, who wants to take responsibility, it's a, it's a job for, it's also a job for politicians. That's uh, that's the right uh, phrase. It's also a job for politicians. Okay. For for um, uh, groups of uh, citizens, uh, action groups, um, journalists, uh, for everyone. Everyone can 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 uh, can have a part in uh, in the change of uh, of a city of a of of a country and so on. It's 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 also a job for politicians, but also for journalists, also okay. for, and so on and so on. Thank you, Phil. Okay. Um, Bo, very quickly again, just, uh, just one thing I wondered is how do you sort of balance the need for urgency um, with gentle persuasion? <laughs> how do you not push people too fast? Mm, I, I, I think that, that uh, I mean, the time scale we had when we started was 15 years. And um, 
and and we are now in in 20 and we should end the process in 25 so i mean 15 years is quite a long time span and and it's not so long a time span if you think about the task that we have to be co2 neutral but still i mean we could plan it and we could prepare people for it um, and i think i i've you know discussed i've thought about you have also a plan should you rewrite that plan i'm not sure you should rewrite your plan because you have the right goals i mean uh, maybe you should be just be more specific make it more detailed find out what 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 do you really uh, what 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 is necessary to do here so you actually uh, reach your goal um, Thank you, Bo. All right, I'm going to ask this of everybody. This is the final question, really. Um, is it right for Perth to be this ambitious? Should what you know? Should we be this ambitious? What should we do first, and what would success look like? Lena, maybe you could try and answer that first. Absolutely, it's the right way to do it. Absolutely, you need to be ambitious because only by being ambitious. You, you do it in a comprehensive way, you take everybody in. And I think, I always say to everyone that the main thing is to make the decision, to, to decide together that let's do it. And then you find your way how to do it. But I think that is the number one thing. And you have done this. You have decided that yes, we are going for it, we are doing it, and I know that you can do it. Thanks, Lena. Philip? Um, as Lena said, it's the only way. You, you need to be ambitious. And you need to be ambitious in every domain. In every domain. I really mean that. Um, and at that moment, if you have results, it, you will succeed. The only thing you, you, you need is you have to accept failure. You have to cope with failure as you should also accept success and cope with success. That's important, but you have, you need to ambitious. It, it, it should move, it, 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 we, we need the change. So be ambitious and don't stop. Thank you. And <laughs> lastly, Bo. Of course, I think uh, you are on the right path. Now you have a decision and you but but you have to go for it with all what that it takes and uh, i've joined two workshops and it showed me that you still need to find out exactly what do you mean when you say that you want to be the most sustainable city in europe small city in europe um, it can be better biodiversity uh, green mobility but i think that there's no way uh, around you have to uh, have CO2 emissions because this is this is urgent that we do something for the climate now. So this has to be a part of it and be specific. I've stressed it's very hard work. It's not done by planting some trees and uh, other small things. Uh, you have to make these specific plans. But also, if you get a successful start, and I think you have got one already. Uh, then you are you are really a half the way because if if um, if you get a successful start then you are also a half a success and people want to join a success uh, so I hope this panel and I hope these conferences have uh, given you support to to really realize the vision to be the most Sm su uh, the most sustainable small city in Europe. So thank you for participating. Thank you all, Philip, Bo, Lena. Really, really appreciate all your input and your support and very, very grateful for your time today as well. So thank you. And do please stay in touch with all that we do. Um, and I hope with each other as well. So thank you. <laughs>